So, I am trying to do a stream. <laughs> uh, and this is kind of the first time uh, I tried that. So, um, I have no idea if you guys can hear me or... Connect my headphones to... Can you guys hear me? Say yes, we can hear you, if you can hear me. Hello guys. I'm just gonna wait. Uh, okay, you can hear me, great, amazing. Uh, it was a bit of work to set up the streaming setup. Uh, <laughs> I have uh, a lav microphone and I have my Sony a7 III camera set up and it is streaming to the computer and then I have this OBS software in the computer and it's uh, capturing the screen and uh, the camera and then that is streamed to YouTube and I have my iPad here on the side to see the chat. So hopefully this should work and um, Basically, I'm gonna edit some photos of ants that I took this morning. I was out for one and a half hours and uh, I was using my Laowa 25mm 2.5 to 5 times magnification uh, macro lens. And uh, I was using an external Godox flash and this diffuser on the flash and I was using it uh, in a wireless fashion so that uh, I could hold the flash in one hand and uh, if these pictures come out okay or good <laughs> I will probably make a YouTube video about this but now I'm gonna edit some photos so this ant that you're seeing right here is actually from yesterday or like two days ago when I tried this the last time and then it was pretty warm and the problem with that is that the ants are so fast when it is warm outside so it's basically impossible to, to get them in focus so I'm gonna throw away these photos probably because none of them were that good. Here are some test shots. So now when I'm starting to edit I uh, in the first phase it is mostly about removing all the bad photos there will be a lot of really bad photos and uh, what to do is I enable caps lock in Lightroom because then every time I put an X on a photo which means that I want to discard it, uh, it just hops to the next photo so I can very quickly go through them. And this was just a test photo that I took when I was uh, inside so that I could see that the flash and everything was working. So let's start with the first purge. <laughs> and it, some of these frames are completely black and that is when um, the flash for some reason didn't work. Uh, the, the flash is not like perfect when it comes to uh, always uh, being triggered. I think it has to do with that I have the flash so close to the camera and it's not really made for that so the signal doesn't always work. I should probably get a better wireless flash. Um, so let's see, yeah, as you can see, there it is not easy to get ants in focus. <laughs> so most of them are out of focus, or here you see the flash didn't trigger. Oh, I see I had a lot of dust on my sensor as well. Time to clean that. Uh, but anyway, this is usually what I do. Like uh, on my first round of editing, and I think I have around 400 photos, I just go through them quickly. I remove all the ones that are obviously bad, like all, all the ones you've seen so far, I would say obviously bad. For example, this one, focus is not on the eyes, so it's not even a discussion, it's a bad photo. Uh, this one uh, could be good. Uh, I think I might keep this one for the next round. Uh, this one is too dark. Can you guys still um, see me and hear me okay? Uh, is everything working with the stream? Oh, this one was almost good, but not really. All right, you can see and hear me, that's great. Hmm. No, this one didn't really cut it. But I am pretty sure I got a 
a few photos that I will be happy with. I'm just waiting for them to, to show up. <laughs> uh, and here we can see that I used a little bit, like the shutter speed was a bit too slow when the ant was moving. Uh, so we have these like um, speed trails or what you should call them. This one was a little bit cool, uh, even though the ant wasn't completely in focus. Mm. And what I noticed actually with uh, the Lawa uh, 2.5 to 5x lens is that it is almost uh, too much magnification with 2.5 times when you're photographing forest ants as I did today. Uh, so I had to kind of look for small forest ants. This picture was pretty good. It was very sharp, but unfortunately I didn't really get the uh, antenna uh, completely in... Uh, the frame. That sucks, but I will keep it for the next round. Now my wife is calling. Hello? Hey. Jag sitter och live streamar. Var något viktigt? Vilken handske var det då? Vilken färg är det då? Okej, okay, jag går och kollar. Um, excuse me guys, I'm just gonna go check something. I will be back in two minutes. <laughs> So I'm back, sorry about that. <laughs> uh, my wife was at the clothing store looking for gloves for my son, so I had to check what size he has. So now we know. <laughs> Anyways, back to the editing. Wow, this one was very sharp. Uh, unfortunately, it was... Yeah, I didn't get the whole ant, but it gets to stay until the next round. This one was also pretty, pretty good. Uh, this one has to go, this one is too dark, this one is too dark, this one is out of focus, out of focus, out of focus, out of focus. <laughs> uh, no, not quite. Too dark, too dark, blur, out of focus. Out of focus. This one could be good. Yes, this one I will keep. Ah, oh, too bad I didn't get the whole leg. As you can see, 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 you can see. Meter is almost a little bit too close up um, to capture ants because you have to aim really, really well to get the whole ant in the frame. Uh, so next time I'm gonna photograph ants, I would probably get like the the lava 60 millimeter so I can. Uh, have a little bit less magnification. And I mean, this is on a full frame camera. If you, I was using an APS-C camera, 
I wouldn't have a chance to get the whole ant in the frame. <laughs> this one was pretty cool, even though only the antenna was in focus. I would keep it uh, out of focus. Mm. Too dark, out of focus, out of focus, out of focus, uh, out of focus. It is so frustrating when you're about to get a really good capture and the flash doesn't trigger. Oh my god. I really need to get a better wireless flash that uh, can handle macro photography in a good way. Because I really like this style of shooting while I'm holding the flash in one hand and the camera in the other hand. I like it because I can uh, ease, more easily uh, vary the angle of the light uh, in real time, so to speak. Uh, and also because the camera becomes lighter when there is no flash on it, so I can hold the camera for longer durations of time without getting tired in my arm. Uh. I tried a lot to get a shot uh, with an ant in the foreground and the sky in the background. Uh, I'm not sure if I got one. This one is not even close to being focused in the right place, but it would be a really cool photo, I think. Okay, this one is almost good. I will keep it for now. Here at least we got the eye in focus, but too bad that the, the front of the face is so blurry. I was shooting at uh, 2.5 times magnification most of the time, and uh, I was shooting almost all of the photos here in the series at f8. Because at f8 you get a, some depth of field, but uh, you avoid mostly most the diffraction, so I think it's a pretty good balance to shoot at 2.5 times magnification. So many autofocus pictures. <laughs> oh. yeah, forest ants are really hard, I think, to photograph because they are never sitting still for more than like two seconds unless you're in some very unusual situation. But it did help that it was very, very cold today. Uh, it was about five degrees Celsius and I could really notice that the ants were a lot slower than they normally are. So uh, uh, I, I, I did get some nice sharp shots, I am pretty sure. And uh, the only reason I managed to get those, I think, was that it was pretty cold today. So the ants weren't that fast. Oh, this one could have been good. Mm. Yeah, um, this one is pretty nice. One of my favorites so far. Let's rotate it. Yeah, it is not perfectly sharp at the right places. And it has a little slight bit of motion blur here on the antenna. But this is some picture that I will probably continue working on. Lots of ant butts here. Uh, I guess I was trying to photograph it and then it turned around. <laughs> This is something 
you don't get to see that much of in my YouTube videos. Um, like, because it would be too boring, I guess, to do a complete video like this where, <laughs> where I really show you the early parts of the, um, uh, the process of editing and, and selecting the good photos. Like, uh, I mean, I think, think this is quite a lot of fun, uh, but it does take a, some time to go through all the bad photos and, and find the, the good ones. Um, so some people think that I always get all my shots in perfect focus and that the I, 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 those are the ones I show in the YouTube video, but that's not the reality. Usually if I take maybe four or five hundred photos in a session, I will probably keep around 10 or 15 of those. Uh, and I, I mean, sometimes I take four or five hundred photos and I keep none of them uh, because uh, I didn't find any of them to be uh, good enough. This one was uh, half decent. I think I will keep it for now. Yeah, it's a new experience uh, for me, this whole thing with streaming, but I wanted to um, practice a bit because I'm doing a live stream uh, with uh, Lauva, Venus Optics, the lens manufacturer in like, I think it's May 1st. So I thought I would uh, do like a simple setup for streaming and try it, which I'm doing right now. <laughs> Uh, both to get the technology in place so that I know that it works and also to um, accustom myself to uh, sitting here just talking while streaming. <laughs> I think um, this picture was quite nice, I like it. Uh, only problem is that the antenna, it looks like it is broken but I think it's just out of focus. But I don't like pictures of ants where the antenna is broken. Um, yeah, anyway, uh, I mean, it takes some getting used to, I think, uh, to do streaming. In the same way, it took some getting used to for me to just record a YouTube video. I mean, in the beginning, I thought it was like really, really cringy to sit and look in a camera and talk. And like that took like five or ten times before I got over that feeling that it felt like really weird to talk into a camera. Now I'm quite comfortable with it, but now I need to get over this uncomfortableness <laughs> that it means to uh, to do a live stream. Like uh, everything I'm saying and doing goes out immediately. <laughs> uh, but as, as with everything else, it's just a matter of um, getting used to it, I think, uh, before you... Yeah, this picture was cool. I kind of like it. Even though the ant itself is not in focus, I... I think it looks cool. I think this is a picture that I will continue working on. Hmm, this one could also be good. Is Canon D 1500 good for macro? Um, yeah, I'm sure it is. I'm not sure exactly what model that is, but it sounds like uh, maybe an entry level APS-C Canon DSLR. And uh, Basically any camera that was made in the last six or seven years and that you can put a macro lens on or a reversed normal lens is a good camera for macro photography. I mean the requirements to get good macro photos on the camera are not that high because you don't use autofocus and um, when it comes to like technolo technological advancements in cameras it is mostly about better autofocus, I think. Like that is where we have seen the biggest um, increases in um, in uh, how good the technology is in recent years. But in macro photography, you don't use autofocus, so an old camera can be really good. Um, and I've tried to show this in a couple of videos. I did, for example, a video with the Ca uh, Nikon 80D or D80. 
which is a camera I bought for $50, 500 Swedish kronor. And I've still got like one of my favorite photos from last year I took with that camera on one photo walk. So um, you can definitely use older and entry level cameras to do macro photography. And another example of that is uh, uh, Thomas Shehan, the guy who um, inspired me to try macro photography for the first time. I think in his uh, videos, the, the, the most famous ones, he um, used like a really old Pentax camera and he got some of the nicest macro photos I've ever seen. Um, so I think the most important thing is to get a macro lens or uh, reverse a lens or use extension tubes to just be able to focus closely and then you have everything you need and of course a flash and uh, when it comes to flashes you can also use a very cheap flash. I only use very cheap flashes actually so far but it's mostly because I haven't found a good reason to upgrade to more expensive flashes. What light would I recommend for macro? Um, I did a video a few weeks ago which is called what's in my macro photography camera bag 2020 or something like that. Uh, have a look at that video that there are talk about my flashes and about diffusers and so on um, and what I think are the best solutions. Um, but basically you can use any flash, but it's important to have a good diffuser uh, to get uh, a nice uh, light in your photos. This picture was pretty cool, even though the flash didn't trigger, but I'm not sure if I can make it really pretty because it is under direct uh, sunlight it looks like. I will remove it and here we have a series of dark photos. I guess the flash was acting up here. <laughs> uh. When I do the stream about Laowa will I have the 24mm probe? Uh, unfortunately no. I haven't actually uh, use that lens. Uh, I haven't been like that interested in it because it is mostly geared towards video. Uh, mm, this photo was pretty cool. Uh, uh, so I haven't even, even though I have a pretty good relationship with Laowa, uh, not because they pay me or anything, but simply because I really love their lenses. Um, I haven't asked them to, to, to try that lens, even though uh, maybe I should because I think many people are interested in it. It has a lens that has gotten a lot of attention. So probably I should email Laowa and, uh, and ask them uh, <laughs> to borrow that lens and do a review. That would be fun actually. This one was pretty cool. Uh, yeah, this is one of my favorites so far, I think. Even managed to get the whole end. Oh my god, Just now I see how much sensor dust I have. <laughs> Later today I will have to clean my sensor. This will be so much work to clean up. And as you might know, sensor dust, uh, it shows a lot more when you're using small apertures. And uh, in macro photography you tend to use small apertures. So that is when you notice a lot of sensor dust, unfortunately. This one was pretty good. Canon or Tamron? Uh, I think both companies make very good lenses. Uh, depends on, on the lens. If you're talking about macro lenses, I think actually that the Canon 100mm L lens is probably a little bit sharper at um, large apertures but it is more expensive so basically you get what you pay for i would say tamron makes some really good macro lenses i used to own the tamron uh, 90 millimeter really great macro lens i was very happy with it uh, reason i sold it is because it was an adapted lens and i have a sony camera and it was a canon lens and 
when I got some more money, I actually prefer to use native lenses, so that is why I sold it. Here we have two ants talking to each other. Unfortunately, it was a very bad photo. <laughs> uh, so we have 38 brave souls who are watching this stream right now. I realize this is not the perfect time to uh, hold a live stream because um, for example the whole United States are still sleeping. Um, I find that people who watch my videos seem to be the most active uh, at night Swedish time and I guess that's because Europe is still awake and uh, the United States are awake. Um, also have pre uh, quite a lot of viewers uh, in India and like Indonesia I've discovered and they are of course before Sweden so you guys it's evening for you now I guess but most of my viewers are in the United States and that is I think mm, a lot because YouTube is big in the United States YouTube isn't Super big in all countries as I have understood it. Ah, too bad this one wasn't in focus. That would have been a cool photo. Stuart Wood thinks the Lava 2X Macro is the sharpest lens on the market. Yeah, I talked to him, uh, I think, yesterday, no, two days ago. And uh, we talked about that lens and he was really, really impressed with uh, the optics of it, which I was as well. I did a review of that lens and that is uh, a very good lens. The uh, reason I don't use it is because um, it is too heavy, I think. Uh, I really, really put a lot of effort into finding lenses, cameras and stuff that is lightweight because when you're out for example, when I took these photos today, I was standing um, beside a tree for one and a half hours, taking photos constantly. And uh, even though my camera and lens is pretty lightweight, I still got really tired in my arm, especially like when you try to find these angles to, to make the photos look cool. It is quite a lot of effort. And if I would have had a, a more heavy camera, I wouldn't. Uh, have had the stamina to, to take as many photos so I think it's really important to have for me at least it is really important to have lightweight gear but that is because I focus so much on uh, freehand for once a different subject I found some oh no I lost the English word for it yeah the stuff that comes from trees uh, that you Anyways, these photos weren't good, so I'm going to delete them. <laughs> I just thought I would try to take some photos of this. What's it called? Like, yeah. yeah, you can tell me what it's called. Yeah, in India, it's 4.10 p.m. Um, have you tested the Olympus? Olympus, 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 Olympus? Yes, I have. I had a brief period, uh, I think two years ago, when I did some macro photography on Micro Four Thirds cameras and uh, the Olympus 60mm uh, is without a doubt uh, the best macro lens for the Micro Four Thirds system. It is really really good, it has a long focal length which gives a nice rendering. But for me, I don't know why, I cannot really put this photo was quite nice. I can't really say exactly why, but I never enjoyed using Micro Four Thirds for macro photography that much. I, I think I didn't get as good results um, as I have gotten with my Sony cameras. But you could also, to be fair, you could also say that I didn't really maybe give it enough of a chance. I only spent like a couple of days, two or three days doing macro photography with Micro Four Thirds cameras, uh, so maybe I should try it again because it is nice with more lightweight cameras and more lightweight lenses, of course. 
And I mean the Olympus 60mm, that lens is so incredibly small and lightweight compared to any full frame or APS-C macro lens. Thank you Andreas for your kind words. Uh, oh, this one was almost good. Uh, I will look more at that picture later. But as you can see, like now in the first phase of editing, it is pretty boring for you guys to watch because I just <laughs> sit there and I reject almost all of my photos. Uh, I mean, the editing process gets, of course, more and more fun the, the farther you go, because in the next round, I will have my favorites that I didn't discard from the first round. And then I will uh, discard even more photos and in the end I will only have like 10 photos maybe that I will edit and try to make as nice as possible. So that is the end goal. Shooting ants without autofocus is a superpower. Yeah, actually the reason I do it without autofocus is that I, I think it would be even harder to do it with autofocus. I've tried at a few uh, times to do macro photography with autofocus and uh, my experience is always that the autofocus does not keep up. Uh, no autofocus in the world is fast enough. So it's better to just uh, use manual focus. Oh, this was a really nice photo. I like 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 my favorite so far. Uh, no, uh, what I was saying is that this, I find it a lot easier to just uh, set the focus uh, at, 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 at have and then move the camera instead of the focus. That is how I've done it now for a long time and I still haven't found a better way actually. Oh, look at those jaws. Hello. And here we have the eyes. Maybe I, it looks like I should be able to possibly focus stack this. Could be a pretty cool end result because he is standing in exactly the same pose. And here we have another frame of the legs. Yeah, it could work. I will actually try that later, I think, to focus stack these. And I will keep this one as well in case it matches up. Let's see. Yeah, it's, he's standing exactly in the same pose. Uh, but here I think I changed maybe the angle. Yeah, I did. So this one will not work to include in the stack. But here we have a nice one as well. Wow. This is a good picture. And here we have, 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 have how he closed it. But this could also be possible to um, focus stack. This was actually the most friendly ant I met today. Uh, he was, as you can see that I got so many photos of him is because he was standing still for so long uh, looking at me. Um, and that's my experience, the best macro photos you get when you encounter a specimen, an ant for example, like this one, who just is chill, he just stands there for several minutes. That is when you have your chance to make take a really good photo because then you can take a lot of photos and evaluate and uh, find the best one. Oh, is there some problems with the stream? Jenny is saying that uh, it's lagging. Is anyone else having problems with the stream or is it working okay?
Here we have the eyes in focus, but it looks really bad with the, the jaws out of focus. I will throw that one away. Okay, so it's lagging. That's not good. Mm. Yeah, I'm not really sure what to do. <laughs> Maybe it's my internet. Let's see here. Uh, but I am on uh, the one that's supposed to be the fastest. Um, yeah, let's try a bit more and um, if it lags a lot, then I might uh, cancel the stream and take it up later. I mean, the, it's so hard to uh, to know also why it is lagging. It could be something on YouTube's end as well. Uh, but as I understood it, it was working very well in the beginning of this stream. Okay, so you say it's mostly okay. All right. After this stream, I will um, try to analyze what happened so we can avoid lag in the future. I'm almost getting bored myself because I took so many ant photos of ants that all look the same. This is not usual for me. Usually I just walk around in several different areas and photograph many different <laughs> kinds of insects, which makes the editing a lot more fun because then I have so many different subjects to look at. But today uh, it was very cold or is very cold in Sweden. So uh, basically the only insects that are out uh, are ants. Now I actually think I'm, I'm getting closer to the end of the first. <laughs> <laughs> first round of editing. Uh, here I actually, this is um, not a regular forest ant, this is some kind of flying ant. Unfortunately not a very good picture. This one isn't as well. This one was pretty cool. I will work more on that one later. I like the out of focus areas and uh, yeah, I like that the eye is almost perfectly in focus and I like that the jaws are in focus. And I also like the composition that he is kind of looking down here. Mm -hmm. And I was wondering a bit um, like what resolution I should stream in. But since I haven't streamed before, I didn't know what to pick. I understood that 4K is maybe <laughs> a bit too much. But I now I think I'm streaming in um, uh, full HD. So this was a nice photo. Uh, or at least pretty nice. I like that I got uh, the sky in the background. Um, it will be fun to work more on this one. Here is another one. Unfortunately, not the whole ant is in the frame. But maybe we can still make something nice out of this. There is some movement here on the antenna, but it still looks pretty okay, I think. Uh, this could be a nice photo, I think. It's not perfectly in focus, but 
something about the composition and the white background pleases me. And that's the last one. <laughs> uh, so now we've gone through, I think, around four or five hundred uh, of my photos from today. And uh, yeah, I uh, took away most of them. Um, so I took away 349 photos. So now I'm going to delete them forever, never to be seen again. And all right, and now we're going to go on the second round of editing these photos. Uh, so we can see how many do I have left. I have um, 53 left. So, um, as I said, usually this is what I do. I have a first round where I remove all the photos that are obviously bad, that, that, that don't have a chance. They are out of focus or they are badly exposed or a bad composition or simply, it, simply I don't get any joy out of looking at them. So I remove all of those in the first round and this is what I've just done. And in the second round, um, I tend to remove most photos, but in the second round it's more about maybe if I have three or four variants of the same photo, I uh, try to find the best one of them and remove the rest. Um, yeah, and then in the third round, usually I have only a few photos left and that is where I actually focus on editing them. So guys, um, I'm gonna take like a very short break to get some more water and uh, make a cup of tea. Uh, I will uh, leave the stream on and I will be back in like two or three minutes.
Okay, I am back. Uh, got myself a cup of um, English breakfast tea, uh, which is one of my favorites besides green tea that I tend to uh, drink a lot. And some water. Oops. So let's see, you had a couple of questions. Um, what shutter speed were you using? Um, I um, tend to vary the shutter speed a lot. Uh, since I'm using a flash when I'm photographing insects, I um, uh, the, fras fras the flash will freeze the action. So I use any shutter speed between 1 60th of a second, which I think many of these photos were at the 60th of a second, to 1 250th of a second. It depends a little bit. For example, if I if I want a lot of uh, the background to be colorful, I use a slower shutter speed. And if I want the background to be black, I use a faster. Um, so, but I, to be honest, I tend to experiment with that. And then when I get home and start editing, I, I kind of look at the different photos with different shutter speeds and pick the best ones. And it, there is no right or wrong there, I think. As long as you're using a fla fast flash, uh, your photos will be sharp anyway. If you don't move the camera too quickly or if the insects don't move too quickly. For example, here um, you can see that the antenna has some uh, blurriness here. And that is because I used a slow shutter speed probably. And the antenna uh, was moving. So, I mean, uh, the flash isn't magical, so we cannot really freeze uh, that kind of action. Um, so my settings, uh, if I would shoot ants with uh, 60 millimeter lens, I'm not sure if you're referring to the Lava 60 millimeter or the Olympus 60 millimeter. Um, 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 camera settings, I have a video called I think it's called like seven foolproof steps to a perfect macro photo or something like that. And in that video, I explain exactly what settings I recommend as a baseline. Uh, for me, it's mostly uh, that I use um, uh, ISO, ISO 100 to get the best possible image quality without noise. Some cameras have a base ISO of 200, for example, uh, Micro Four Thirds and uh, Fujifilm cameras, and then you use that, of course, instead of 100. And uh, uh, when it comes to uh, shutter speed, as I said, you can try different ones, uh, but you have the biggest chance of getting a sharp photo, of course, if you use 1 250th or faster. And then the flash I have in manual mode, so I... Uh, usually put it at 1 16th of the strength and then I adjust the strength depending on the, the weather conditions and how the pictures come out. And aperture, uh, I tend to keep it around f8, f10 when I'm doing macro photography. In some cases I want to have a shorter uh, depth of field and then I use 5.6, but I very rarely use f2.8 or f4 at high magnifications. Uh, because the depth of field is simply too shallow. All right, so uh, let's do some more editing and uh, let's uh, uh, look through the photos one more round. Uh, so this one, 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 like this. This photo is pretty good, but it's not perfect. Um, I think I will keep it for now, but it, it is in a dangerous place, that photo. <laughs> uh, let's see, let's rotate this one. This one is a little bit too blurry. It has some motion blur here, so I will uh, get rid of it. And this one, I want to rotate it to see how it can look. Uh, what if we crop it a bit? No, this is not good enough. Basically, at this point in my editing, I 
I have kind of like an internal bar, like what is a good photo for me, what can I stand behind and, and that I think is a nice photo and this does not pass that bar so it goes away. This one is very close to being a really good photo but it so, sucks so much that the antenna isn't really in the frame here. That For me that kind of destroys the whole picture. Uh, it could still be um, uh, possible to uh, maybe do something creative here. For example, if we cut off a part of all the legs, then maybe it looks more... No. I'm not sure. I like... Maybe what if I uh, turn it around like this? What do you guys think? I think this is like, maybe if I cut off m even more of the antennas like this, so it's mo even more focus on the actual body of the ant. I mean, this is um, like, it, it is kind of an interesting composition because you don't see it that much. Uh, let's see, something like this. I mean, this is a pretty cool picture. I think this might have saved it for me. And of course, it is always in the eye of the beholder. Some of you might think this is a really shitty image, but you always have to go on your own gut feeling. What else do you have? And you are the photographer, and uh, if you think it's a good photo, then it's a good photo. I'm not sure about the white balance, but I will keep this one. I kind of like it, like it now that I cropped it a bit. Now it isn't as apparent of a problem that one of the antennas wasn't in the frame. Um, what is the best aperture for the Laowa 25mm? Uh, there is no one best aperture, it depends on the magnification. Uh, the higher the magnification, the lower uh, or the larger aperture you have to use to avoid diffraction. But in some cases, you exist, 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 you exist softness due to diffraction because you want a deeper depth of field so it's always a balance but uh, on the uh, you, maybe you can say like this at 2.5 times magnification i would uh, use maybe between f4 and f8 today i used mostly f8 that's 2.5 times magnification at three or four times magnification i would probably use f4 or f5.6 to avoid diffraction. Uh, at five times magnification, I would probably use just f4. Uh, but those are just like rough uh, rules of thumb. Uh, you will have to experiment yourself and, uh, and see what kind of results you get with different apertures. That is the best way uh, to learn, I think. Uh, so what about this photo? I don't like the colors that much, but I kind of like the composition. But it's not a great photo. And I mean, the back legs here are out of frame. I think I will throw it away. Goodbye. This is a similar one. No, it doesn't really please me too much. I think it has to do a lot with this part being out of focus and this part being out of focus. Uh, possibly if we crop it aggressively like this, maybe. Let's see what it looks like. No, this is not a good photo to me. Goodbye. This one I want to turn around. I kind of like it. I like the colors. I like how the background is almost like a mango colored but with some green in it. I like how I got the eye perfectly sharp here. I don't like that <laughs> the leg was out of frame. I uh, don't like the sensor dust. Uh, let's try to remove some of that. Oh, I really need to clean my sensor. That will be top of my to-do list after this. I 
I like this photo, even though the leg is out of frame. Um, we crop it a little bit here. It's a nice picture. And this one, as I talked about earlier, it is kind of cool, even though the ant itself is not really in focus. Um, oh, so many dust spots. Uh, this one has to go not sure why I kept it the last time this one also like it is pretty cool with its jaws but like it's not a good photo overall the legs aren't in the frame and yeah oh maybe I kept it because I wanted to possibly focus stack it but the angle kind of varies so I'm not sure how easy that would be I think I will let it go like what destroys these photos is that the jaws aren't in focus when the eyes are in focus so it kind of doesn't look that good uh, this one the problem with this one I think is the composition now it looks a bit cooler when it is turned like this and it is more correct because this ant was sitting on a tree like all of these photos basically were, were taken when the ants were crawling on a birch tree uh, and I chose to photograph them uh, when they were crawling on a tree because then you have a pretty flat surface that they are crawling at and it's much easier to get a good photo and also you have the convenience of being able to photograph as you're standing up in a convenient height uh, because ants will always pass you uh, as you stand there by the tree so it's a very convenient way to photograph ants if you see um, one of their living places look for trees nearby and you will find ants crawling there I'm a bit torn about this photo the eye isn't in perfect focus and that kind of destroys it but it I kind of like it still, I like that the sky is in the background, I think I will keep it for now. Um, I like the light in this photo, but unfortunately the ant is out of focus. And even though the light looks really cool, uh, I'm not sure, I think it's a good photo. No, it's not good enough. This one is not good enough. Uh, this eye should have been in focus. But other than that, it's a really cool photo. And I'm torn about this one. Really torn. I think it okay it, it will stay for now this one i like uh, might benefit from some cropping here some more yellow uh, lighter background perhaps no. more contrast Hey. Mm. Gick det bra? Mm. Mm. Ja, jag är snart klar. Mm. Så so I'm gonna remove some dust spots here, I think.
maybe something like that. Yeah, I like this photo. And here we have a similar one, not sharp enough in the right places. And this one, I don't like the light. Uh, I think probably the flash didn't trigger. Yeah, because it's so dark. Same here. No, this is not good. Same here. The light is not that good. Yeah, it's only sunlight and it's very, very hard to take a photo of an insect in only sunlight and have it be a good photo. Unfortunately, it rarely works out. And this one is like pretty cool, but I already have a similar one that is a lot nicer. This one and possibly this one. Now that I look at this one again, it's like not really that good. Bye bye. I think this is actually the keeper from this series. This one is not good enough. The angle of the ant wasn't really that good. Um, there is something about this picture I really like. Um, maybe it's the... Uh, I think I would try something similar to what I did earlier with where like because the antenna was cut off, I will also cut off a bit more and, and make it really tightly cropped. See how that looks. Yeah, it's not like what bothers me now about this photo is that this part here is not in focus, but otherwise I think it's a pretty good photo because you really feel that you're really close to the end. Um, yeah, I will continue working on it more later, but let's just remove the, some dust spots. These tools seem to be very CPU intensive because when I just 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 when I <laughs> feels very slow. Okay. This one is also pretty cool, but Unfortunately, the, the dark parts are a bit too dark. Have I tried the Sony 90mm macro lens? Um, no, I haven't. Um, I, I have heard that it is a really good lens and I've seen reviews of it and yeah, it is probably great. Uh, but the reason I, I haven't tried it is because it is so expensive and um, I've chosen to buy other macro lenses where I feel I get more for the money. Uh, but uh, it would be very interesting to try it and to make a review of it because so many people ask me about this lens and are curious about what I think of it. Uh, so my only thoughts on it is that it is probably a very good lens, but I haven't tried it myself. I'm not sure about this picture. Um, I think I will keep it for now, but I'm not sure if it will be in the, the final lineup. Hmm. This one is pretty cool. Um, I'm also a bit torn, but I will keep it for now. I really like the very soft light in this photo and I think it is partly because it is sitting on a white surface so that the light bounces up from beneath as well which makes it very very soft but unfortunately it's a really bad composition because like half the ant is missing <laughs> so I think I will throw it away I'm just gonna try no it's not a good photo goodbye uh, this one also isn't quite good enough to keep. I will throw it away. Same here, boring composition and also some movement blur and, and yeah, not a good photo. Um, 
this one I have one that I really like that is very similar to this one that I edited earlier so I think I will actually throw this one away and also you can see there is no movement blur here so goodbye this one I really like I think I will keep it maybe crop it a little bit uh, but not too much I like that there is some environment here that you can see the ant in it adds something to the picture yeah and have, here we have this series of photos and none of them are really that great uh, of their own but it could be a very good photo if, if I stack some of them so I think I will just leave them for now and see if I can maybe use some stacking tool to um, do a stack and if I succeed in that I might keep them otherwise I will just throw them away I think but I mean I don't think any of these are like good enough on their own yeah freak wave um, the seven artisans lens I did a review of it and it is a really great value for money uh, and actually some uh, when I used the lens I didn't know that but many commenters said that you could actually remove that protruding barrel uh, if you want to so that could be worth trying and maybe you found it out yourself as well um, and as you mentioned forest ants when you come close to them with a macro lens quite often they just stop and they kind of stand on their back legs and and like uh, do like a threatening pose towards the lens I guess this is some kind of defense uh, pose uh, which is, can actually be quite useful because then they're standing still for a couple of seconds and you might get uh, a good shot of them uh, so this is something I also noticed with forest ants uh, this is one of my favorite photos from this series uh, unfortunately it's not the focus isn't completely perfect but I still love the photo and I will keep it I'm gonna experiment a little bit now with white balance and uh, I think I want to emphasize this blue here uh, on the top maybe like this and I'm not sure I want to keep this like behind of another ant or not. I'm not sure if... Let's see what happens if we remove it. Hmm. Something tells me... Maybe I should keep that. Because the photo is good because, because of the composition where this ant is coming from above and, and uh, kind of climbing down. But still this thing is a bit... <laughs> distracting maybe we can maybe we can kind of try to hide it somehow maybe make this part darker i don't know not sure if this is a good idea uh, we'll see how do i rotate this whoops maybe something like that remove it with a stamp I'm not sure that would work uh, the, the stamp in Lightroom is so bad <laughs> it barely works for anything uh, on the, but the simplest things um, yeah I think this now it oh, you can see some of the legs still Maybe something like this. What I like to do when editing is to, as, as I've talked about, go several rounds and I visit each photo, do some edits and then I continue and then I visit the photo again and then I, when I haven't looked at it in a little while, I can see much better what needs to be done. Uh, so this is a good like tip. The best thing is if you can have the patience to actually revisit photos the day after or several days after, then you can really see new things. But usually I am unfortunately not that patient. So this one is pretty nice. Let's compare it to this other one. Not sure which one I like best. 
the first one is better maybe because more of the ant is in the frame. Uh, Yeah, I think I will re get rid of the second one and uh, see if I can do some uh, edits here. And here again, I think I will try to uh, emphasize the, the blueness of the sky. Uh, and then maybe make the overall picture a little bit more yellow like this. Or maybe let's try this. I really hate myself for not cleaning the sensor. So much work with all these dust spots and I seem to have a lot of them today. <laughs> So maybe I, I should, uh, usually I want to change the uh, aspect ratio to 8 by 10 because then I know I can post it on Instagram. <laughs> so let's try something like this. Okay. Not sure why I kept this one. Yeah, I mean, it's cool with a white background, but it is not good enough. Goodbye. All right, so now we are done with uh, the second pass. And um, yeah, let's remove the ones from disk. 24 photos deleted on this second pass. Let's see what we have left. Except this series, which I don't really count, we have... Uh, Still quite a lot of photos. Yeah, we have um, 12 left. And um, I think now I will probably take a little bit of a longer break and then revisit these 12 and do some final edits and then, uh, yeah, kind of save them and maybe post some of them on Instagram. And then later I will publish a video uh, from this photo walk with some general tips about photographing ants and stuff, stuff I learned today. Um, let's go through them one more time. I like this one after the, the cropping. I think it kind of it's kind of cool. I like the colors in this one. I think that is the strength of this photo, the background color and how it contrasts with the ant. Uh, I like this photo because it's a bit unconventional. The ant is out of focus, but I like the antenna and, and, and how it contrasts with the ant and how the ant contrasts with the background. I, I know like this picture is a typical photo that if I would post it on Instagram, it wouldn't get that many likes, but I still like it personally. So I think that is something you should always remember to trust your own judgment because Otherwise, it's not really your photography. Otherwise, it's your Instagram followers who are kind of deciding what, what you like or not. And that is not how it should be. Um, not sure how much I like this one on the second view, but I like that the sky is in the background. I wanted a photo like that. And yeah, I love this one. This is maybe my favorite from today. Maybe, maybe. Now I see some more dust spots. Oh my God. Let's get rid of them. And there are probably more <laughs> that I'm not seeing right now. This one might go. Now when I look at it again, I don't find it that cool. Um, but yeah, I will keep it for now. Same with this one. It's not really that great. This is a typical photo that I might delete on the next round. This one has something. 
Here you see an ant is in almost a kind of defense pose that one you guys talked about. Uh, when it stands on its back legs and kind of reaches for the camera. I think it's okay, but it's not one of my favorites from today. Then we have this one again. I really like it. Uh, one of my favorites from today. This one as well. So bad that the back leg isn't in the frame. If it would have been, it would have been a really, really good photo that I would have loved a lot. But yeah, that's life. Okay, guys, I think that's it for this stream. I think I'm done for now. Uh, there have been between uh, 20 and 40 people watching. Uh, so thank you a lot for staying around and, and watching. And uh, yeah, maybe I'll do more streams soon again. <laughs> It's been fun, uh, but I think I will um, end it here. All right. Bye, guys.